It all began one Tuesday after school. I was waiting in the playground for my best friend, Benka. I didn't know then What's that up? this was going to be the strangest day in my life. We mustn't be late. OK. I'm ready. Come. Just wait till you see it. Oh? It's different from all the other kites Dad and I have ever made. Really? Benka and I were going to try out his new kite. The one he and his father had made together. We stopped off first at the corner store to buy some crackers for Aunt Edna. Plain crackers, not the salty ones. Goodbye. Hi, Mrs. London. Hello, you two. There you are, Buzzer. Thanks, Mrs. London. Not at all, Buzzer. Bye. Bye. You see, I live with Aunt Edna and Uncle Sixton because my mother died when I was born and nobody bothered to find my father and tell him about me. I'll be right back. Don't slam the door. And take your boots off. And wash your hands properly. I don't want dirty marks everywhere. Aunt Edna really wanted a little girl. But there weren't any at the orphanage she could have. So she had to take me instead. Did you get the crackers? Leave them on the table. And don't leave the fridge open. And rinse out the glass properly. Who's there? Who's there? Why don't you answer me? I already rinsed out the glass, Aunt Edna. Benk is waiting for me downstairs. May I go? Please. These are salted. I specifically told you unsalted crackers. But you never listen, do you? You don't pay any attention to what you're told. You know perfectly well your Uncle Sixton can't eat salty foods because of his heart. And this is the thanks he gets for taking you into his home. Busse, take it. Run. Kate. Easy. Easy. Come on, Benke. It's my turn. That's right. Get out the line. A little more. That's it. I sometimes wish that Benka's father was my father, too. I think a lot about my real father, who he is, where he is, and why I can't live with him instead of having to live with Aunt Edna and Uncle Sixton. And Aunt Edna said I had to be home for supper at six, at the very latest. Hey, over here, here! Oh, no. Get away! Get away! You! Get out from there! Shh. Go on! Get out of here! Go on! Say, look what we've got here. Grab his hat! Give it back! Go take it! Let me go!
Otherwise, it's 20 to 7. How many times must I tell you to brush off all the mud before you come in? I spent all morning cleaning the floor. And don't hang your wet jacket on top of your uncle's coat. Why are you late? I'm sorry. What's this? It wasn't my fault. Into the bathroom. Oh. Look at it. Completely ruined. Uh, uh. Just wait till your Uncle Sixton gets home. Uh. Now go to your room. Yes, Aunt Edna. I don't want to see or hear you the rest of the evening. Gave him a decent upbringing. And this is the thanks you get. It's high time you spoke to the boy. Sixton? Mm -hmm. Sixton, mm -hmm. he's nothing but trouble. We ought never to have taken him in. We're stuck with him now. But that boy is evil, Sixton. I know he is. It's hereditary. His father was a no good bum. And he'll end up the same way. A bum, like his father. My father is not a bum. He isn't. He isn't. He isn't. I'll find my father. I'll find him. Then she'll see how fine he is. Just you wait. I'll find him. You'll see. Hello, Bussa. Hi, Mrs. London. Wait a minute, Bussa. I was expecting you. Would you like a nap? Yes, please. Come in. Mrs. Linden was always kind to me. Gave me sweets and fruits and things. Since then, I've often wondered about her. Because it was in her shop that it all really began. Would you mail this for me? Sure. Use the mailbox at the end of the street. Okay. Farewell, Bo Wilhelm Olsen.
to the king of the land of far away. The one you have been seeking for so long is now on his way. He travels by day and he travels by night. And he bears in his hand a sign of an apple of gold. The land of far away. I wish I was there. Who are you? I am the spirit from the land of far away. The land of far away? Is that where you come from? It is. And are you going back there? I am. Oh, spirit, please take me with you to the land of far away. I'm sorry, child. I cannot. Oh, but you can. I know you can. Please. Ask anything else, but not that. That is beyond my powers. An apple of gold? Tell me, child, what is your name? Bossa. Bo Wilhelm Olsen. Bo Wilhelm Olsen. And you bear in your hand the sign, an apple of gold. You are the one I have come to fetch. You are the one the king of the land of far away has been seeking for so many years. Now grab hold of my beard. Hold on tight. Thank you. 
land of far away. That's Green Meadow Island. And that man down there is... No! Don't tell me! I already know! It's my father! Yes, your father. The king of the land of far away. I'd find you. Mio. My Mio. Mio? But my name is Bussa. Mio, my son. I've spent nine years looking for you, and I've missed you so. And all the time I kept saying to myself, Mio. My Mio. So you see. I should know that that is your name. All that about being called Bussa was wrong. I knew it. It was all wrong. The Aunt Edna and Uncle Sixton. Yes, everything's been put right now. And from now on, you're going to live with me in my castle on Green Meadow Island, in the land of far away. My father took me by the hand, and it felt so good to feel my hand in his. Aunt Edna and Uncle Sixton had never done that. I wish Aunt Edna could see him now, how wonderful he is. It's great. And I'm so happy to be here, to have found you. Oh, that's fine. Beautiful, isn't he? Oh, yes. This is your horse. His name is Miramis. My horse? That's right. Would you like to ride him? Come on. Bend your knee. I don't know how to ride. Will I be able to? Yes. You can do anything you want as long as you have enough courage in your heart to do it. Go on. Come on. Father, thank you. If only Benke could be here. Benke? Yes, he's my best friend. Welcome to Green Meadow Island. Benke! My name's Yum Yum. Yum Yum. Hi, I'm Bussa. Bussa? Now, of course. My name is Mio. Yes, I know. The king sent messengers throughout the land with the news that Mio would come home. Yum Yum's father takes care of all my roses. He's the royal gardener. You're lucky, Mio. Miramis is the finest horse in the whole kingdom. Would you like to ride him too? Would I?
You're the finest, cleverest horse in the whole wide world. What a wonderful horse. Yes, his name is Miramis. I'm Mio. I know. I'm Yiri. These are my two brothers and my two sisters. Is it time yet? No, not yet. Time for what? You'll see. It's very deep. Where's the bucket? It isn't that kind of a well. It's a whispering well. A what? A whispering well. That's what it's called. Welcome, Prince Mio. You know who I am. Of course. Everyone knows who you are, Mio. I've begun to realize that. But I still don't know who everyone is. What's your name? No, no. And these are my sheep. What strange music. Please teach me how to play it. Sure. Here. These belong to my two brothers but they will not be needing them anymore. <laughs> Just put the flute to your mouth and listen how the wind sings to the leaves. Nono taught us how to play the strange tune, and he told us that his father taught him how to play it, and his father had learned it from his father. For thousands and thousands of years, Nono said, the shepherds on Green Meadow Island had been playing it. Thanks. This is the best bread I've ever tasted. We call it bread to satisfy all hunger. Take it. You will need it. Thank you. No, please! What's going on? You'll see. Yes. Look into the well, but be perfectly quiet. Once upon a time, there lived a cruel and evil knight in the blackest and grimmest of castles. He was so evil, he had carried off all the children from the peaceful country where they lived. And his guards and spies all had hearts of the hardest stone. And for thousands and thousands of years, the people lived in fear and terror of the evil knight. Those children who refused to serve him, he turned into birds, doomed to circle above the dead lake until the day when all that was left of his terrible castle would be a pile of stones. But one day a king's son went riding through the moonlight. He rode through the forest of mysteries, accompanied by a single friend on a beautiful white horse.
Father, where is the forest of mysteries? Why do you ask, Mio? I want to ride there tonight. So soon. Please, Father, I want to. So soon. Would you rather I didn't go? Are you worried about me riding into the forest of mysteries at night? No. Why? Should I be? A forest that sleeps peacefully in the moonlight can do no harm. me to stay here with you instead. No, Mio. The forest of mysteries awaits you. You may ride through it as long as Miramis can carry you. But there is one thing you must know. There is something called the land outside, which lies beyond the forest of mysteries. Who lives there? Kato, the evil knight. You're so dear to me, Mio. But my heart, it hurts so at the thought of Kato. If your heart hurts at the thought of him, then don't think of him. You're right. I'll try not to. And you won't be sad? I won't. Promise? I promise. You go now, Mio. Go. Go. Thank you, Father. I'll come back very soon. I promise. Yum yum. Guess what I'm going to do tonight? When the moon is up, I'm going to ride through the forest of mysteries. At last? Yes. Do you want to come too? Do I want to come too? Of course I do. Look what I've got. These will keep us warm. And I've got some of the bread that satisfies all hunger. bridge in the world. This is all part of your father's kingdom, and the land on the other side of the water, too. Are those my father's guards? Yes. At night, they draw out the bridge so that no one can cross over onto Green Meadow Island. That way, we can all sleep safely at night. Why? Who lives on the other side? Kato, the evil knight from the land outside. Kato. I must ride over to the other side. Come on. Stop that! Stop that! Hey! Wait!
much you don't know, Mia. Where does it lead to? I don't know. Let's find out. Come on. Wait here, Miramis. Mio and Yum Yum. What's kept you so long? Come in. Don't be afraid. Come in. Seasons have passed while I've waited for a prince and his faithful companion. Why do you sit here at night, weaving? I weave the fabric of dreams, and that can only be done at night. The tapestry of fairy tales, the fabric of dreams, are always woven at night. Let me have your cape, Mio. You've torn it on the briars. Why does that bird sing like that? Why? It's the bird of grief, singing for my child. My daughter. Who was taken away. Who took her away from you? Who? No! Don't tell me. I already know. Please. Don't mention that dreadful name. No or the moon will turn black. It was Carto. Carto. Every time I heard that awful name, I felt so frightened. I didn't know why or what I was supposed to do. But as I listened to the bird of grief, as I heard the way it sang, something strange happened inside me. Yum yum. I'm going to the land outside. Yes, I know. How can you? I didn't know myself until right now. I've known all along you go to the land outside, Mio. Everyone knows. Everyone? Yes. The bird of grief knows. So does Nono. His flute sings about it. And Yiri and all his brothers and sisters. And the whispering well knows it too. Everyone knows. And my father? The king? He's always known. And he wants me to go. Yes. I'm frightened, Yum Yum. Why me? Only a male child of royal blood can fight the evil knight. Only a king's son. Farewell, Yum Yum. I'm going with you. No. You cannot follow me to where I'm going. I'm going with you. The legend says a male child of royal blood riding a white horse, accompanied by a single friend. 
That was predicted thousands and thousands of years ago. You can't change that. You're a true friend, Yum Yum. Mio, your cape. The finest fabric I ever wove. And I give it to the one who will rescue my daughter, Milimani. Thank you. Are we ready? Yes, we are. And so we set off for the land outside to do battle with the evil knight Kato and to rescue Milimani, the weevil woman's daughter, Nono's two brothers, Yuri's little sister, and all the other children Kato had taken away. The land outside. We've reached the land outside. Come on. trap but what if it isn't whoever it is we must find him and help him wait here miramis don't be afraid we won't be long cries. We heard how hungry you were, so we brought you some bread. Take it. Don't be afraid. Here. It's Bread to satisfy all hunger. Why have you come here? We've come to fight the evil knight Kato. Go back to where you come from. Go back before it's too late. No, I will not. I came here to fight the evil knight Kato, and I will. 
don't make so much noise about it. His spies will hear you. They might be out there, or even in here. Or over there, or anywhere. Spies everywhere. You mean Carto spies? Shh! Hold your tongue! Are you tired of life? Whatever you do, don't trust anyone. Do you hear? Don't go into anyone's house. Even if you think you are among friends, you won't be. They'll betray you. They'll hand you over to him. Don't trust anyone, ever. Do you understand? Not even me. How do you know I won't send his spies after you? Hey, boy. I don't know. But I don't think you will. <sighs> Maybe not. There are still a few people left in this land who won't betray you. And there are still a few people who can forge weapons. You're right. We'll need a weapon. Mio must have a sword. <laughs> left who could forge weapons. Go to the forger of swords and tell him that I, Eno, sent you. How do I find the forger of swords? Look in the deepest hole, in the blackest of mountains. Go through the dead forest. Go now. Something's happened to Miramis. Come on. Order of swords. You need a sword. Yes, but first we've got to get through the dead forest. <laughs> Poor Miramis. How would we get to the Forger of Swords without him? I wanted to turn back, but I was a king's son, a prince. I had to go on, 
for Miramis's sake, and for the sake of all the children Carter had taken away. Inside the dead forest. Yes. I wonder if we'll ever come out again. It's so quiet and creepy. something. So did I. It came from over there. No, I think it was over there. saved us. I wonder why. Perhaps it hates Carto. It must have been his evilness that killed off all the trees in the forest. I don't think a tree can ever forgive anyone for doing that. Forger of Swords. Look at that. The Blackest Mountain. That must be it. Come on. Now we've found the mountain, Yum Yum. How do we get in?
We passed them! Look back there! After them! They mustn't get away! Over here! Yum yum! Now we're inside the blackest of mountains. But will we ever find our way out of here? The deepest hole in the blackest mountain. That's what Eno said. That's where the Forger of Swords lives. Yum yum. Are you all right? Yes. But now that we've found each other, which way do we go? I don't know. But it doesn't matter as long as we go together.
What a clear brow. What clear eyes. And how beautifully you are playing in my mountain. I've come to ask you for a sword. Eno sent me. Why do you want a sword? I'm going to fight the evil knight Kato. Death to the evil knight! Death to Kato! You see those swords? They're the finest and the sharpest swords in the world. Every one of them made by these hands. For Kato, I forge all Kato's swords. Then why did you shout death to Kato? Because no one hates Kato more than I do. Why are you chained to the mountain? Why don't you melt your chain on the forge and escape? I can't! Because Kato himself made this chain. There is no fire hot enough to melt it, and no hammer strong enough to smash it. It isn't easy to break the chains of hatred. Why chains of hatred? I forge all Kato's swords. I forge the swords that kill the innocent and the good. Kato needs me. He needs my swords. That's why he keeps me here, chained to the mountain day and night. But... There is one thing he doesn't know. He doesn't know about this. For a thousand years, I've been forging a sword that could cut through the hardest stone. Finally, last night, I finished it. Only last night. This was not forged to kill the innocent and good people. This was forged to kill only one person, Kato! But why does it have to cut through stone? Because Kato has a heart of stone. Does he? Yes. And an iron claw. He doesn't have a left hand. He has an iron claw instead. And with it, he rips out the heart of everyone he catches. <clears throat> and he puts in a heart of stone, like his heart of stone. Give me that sword. Of the mountain. It's too narrow. <laughs> too narrow for me, but not for you. Follow the stream all the way. It'll lead you to the shore of the dead lake. There's a raft in there to take you across the water to Kato's castle. Good luck to you. Good luck. Soon, soon, it'll be time for your last fight, Kato. Be on your watch, Prince Bio. Be aware of the Iron Claw! As soon as you see it, strike with your sword! Or it can be too late! Too late, Prince Mio!
We'll have to climb the rock. It's the only way to get inside the castle. Come on. further.
Welcome, Prince Mio. dangerous sword I have ever seen in my castle. It cannot be used to kill the good and the innocent. What shall I do with it? I will throw it into the dead lake, for this is the most dangerous sword I have ever held. What shall I do with my two enemies? What shall I do with my enemies who have come so far to kill me? Shall I cover them with feathers? Shall I turn their arms into wings and send them out to circle around the dead lake for thousands and thousands of years, screeching? Shall I rip out their hearts and replace them with hearts of stone and have them as page boys? lock them up in the tower until they die of hunger. Yes. I will lock them up in the tower. In my castle, it only takes one night to die of hunger. That is how long the night is and how terrible the hunger. And when the night is over, there will be nothing left of Prince Mio and his faithful friend but a little pile of white bones. Take them. Put seven times seven guards in the corridors between the tower and my room. When the night is over, I will go to the tower and I will look at that little pile of white bones. Farewell, Prince Mio. Farewell. <laughs>
when the night is over, all that will be left of us is a little pile of bones. I didn't want to die. I didn't want to end up a pile of bones. I wanted to be back on Green Meadow Island with my father. And now, I would never see him again. Or Miramis. I'm tired. And I'm hungry. I've never been so hungry in all my life. I'm hungry, too. If only we had left some of the bread that satisfies all hunger. on inside out, I become invisible. Look! If only we could open the door. Then you could sneak past the guards in your invisible cape and escape back to the land of far away. And what about you, Yum Yum? I'll have to stay here. You've only got one invisible cape. Yes, and only one friend. If we're to die, we shall die together. Now I can fight Carto. But what about the locks on the door? How will you get past seven times seven guards posted between here and Carto's room? My sword will cut through the locks, and my cape will hide me from the guards. And if I never return, my very last thoughts will be of you and my father. Mio. Good luck. I heard a creak. Hmm? More like a squeak.
this. Me, Kato, your time has come. Defeated me, Prince Mio. Strike and make sure your aim is true. I have known for a long time that this moment would come. But remember, Prince Mio, even if you kill me, you cannot destroy evil. Another Kato will rule, and another, and another. And what can you do about it? Nothing. Let me live. Take your faithful little friend and your white horse 
and leave this place. Go home to your father. He is waiting for you. Go home before it is too late. Oh, no. I came here to destroy you, and I will. And even if you kill me, another prince will come. And another, and another. Then you must die. The spell had been broken. They were all down there. But they weren't birds anymore. They were free. The weaver woman's daughter. Nono's two brothers. Yuri's little sister. And all the other children Kato had taken away. What did I say? The time has come for Kato's last fight. That's what I said, and I was right, wasn't I, Prince Mio? Look! Look! It was growing, it was growing in the dead forest. That's where I found it. I knew you would succeed.
I'm the owner. It's a while now since I first came to the land of far away. And I wonder what Aunt Edna and Uncle Sixton said when I never came home. They cared so little about me. I doubt they've even noticed that I've gone. Aunt Edna probably thinks I'm still sitting on that park bench. But she's wrong. She won't find me there because I'm here, in the land of far away together with my father, whom I love so much, and who loves me so much. That's how it is. Bo Wilhelm Olsen is in the land of far away, and is very, very happy with his father, the king. Big bird. 